Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be covering the case of Dagmar Overby. Dagmar Overby was born in Dagmar Joanne Amelie Overby on the 23rd of April 1887 in Denmark to a poor family of farmers who resided in a small Danish village called Asendra. As a child, she was described as difficult, moody and demanding, which followed her into lying a lot and stealing from plenty of people. Now, despite all the negatives, she was highly intelligent and was the top of her class. But unfortunately, Dagmar could never shake her bad habits. At the age of 12, Dagmar stole from her neighbor's purse and was caught. This was the final straw for her parents, as they later sent her to a farm in Fannin, which was about an hour away from their small village. At this farm, Dagmar was paid a salary in exchange for her services, which included cleaning, laundry, cooking, and milking cows. Not too long after, Dagmar left the farm and continued to work as a servant for others. However, it seemed as if she learned nothing at all from her time at the farm, which was evidenced when she was caught stealing from one of the people she served for. She spent approximately 10 days in prison before she was released. After her release, she returned to her childhood home where she found work as a waitress. Working as a waitress led her to meeting a regular customer named Bisgard, who she later got into a relationship with. They eventually moved in together and shortly after had a child, a baby boy. But sadly, not too long after, their son died under mysterious conditions. When examined by doctors, they stated that the baby had blue lips, which indicated the possibility of choking. Yet, on the death certificate, it states that the baby's cause of death was pneumonia. Plenty of people were suspicious of the baby's death, which ultimately led to Dagmar leaving town and her partner Bisgard in 1912. She eventually met another man by the name of Jen Sorensen. Unknown to Jen, when they initially met, Dagmar was already pregnant with someone else's baby. She eventually gave birth to a baby girl and named her Rena Marie. Wistfully, she gave up her baby for adoption to prevent embarrassment to Jen since they were not married and especially since the kid was not his. Now the couple remained together and later down the line she fell pregnant with Jen's baby. However, Jen was against the idea of having a baby, and his desire was for Dagmar to get an abortion, which at the time was illegal. In response, Dagmar denied his request and proceeded with the pregnancy. Dagmar gave birth to a baby boy, but in hopes to marry Jen, she abandoned the baby in a haystack. When she debated the idea of marriage with Jen, he stated that he did not want to marry Dagmar which left her absolutely devastated to the point where she attempted to commit suicide. Nevertheless, Dagmar got over it and decided that she was going to grow from this heartbreak. Dagmar reunited with her daughter Irina, or Irena, whom she gave up for adoption years earlier. The pair moved to Copenhagen from Asendrup, which was about 250 kilometers away. Dagmar opened a sweet shop in 1915 and soon after she met another man and ultimately they moved in together. Unfortunately, their sweets shop closed for reasons unbeknownst to me, and at this point, Dagmar began actively searching for another source of income, where she discovered one as a childminder, which is basically just a caretaker for children. She specifically took care of children birthed out of Whitlock. Whilst working as a childminder, Dagmar stumbled across an article of a woman in the newspaper that received funds, specifically 500 kron for adopting a child. Kron is a title for Danish currency. Now this inspired Dagmar to set up an adoption agency which was illegal as she didn't take on any legal prerequisites. Her plan was to take children born out of wedlock and set them up for adoption where they are required to pay a monthly maintenance fee in exchange for Dagmar taking care of them until they are adopted by a family. Dagmar searched the newspaper for young mothers who were advertising their babies for adoption, 
Thatch is when she stumbled across a 26-year-old by the name of Rasmin Jensen, who had given birth to a baby at a foodlock. They eventually made contact and on April the 15th, 1916, Rasmin put her three-week-old baby boy, Harry, into Dagmar's adoption agency. The agreement they had was that Rasmin would pay 12 krone every month until Harry was adopted. Disturbingly, Dagmar took Harry for a walk in his pram one day and decided for an unbeknown reason to strangle him. She then dumped him in a public toilet at a local cemetery where he was found a couple of days later by cemetery maintenance people. On the day the body was found, Dagmar writes Rasmine a letter and reassures her about Harry's safety and well-being. And for some odd reason, Dagmar mentions in the letter that Harry was not crying at all. About two weeks later, Dagmar accepted another baby from another mother and again strangled the infant and placed their body under a bridge. From the duration of 1913 to 1920, she murdered as many as 25 children who were put through her adoption agency. Several of them were either strangled or drowned and then burned to death in her masonry heater. Now Dagmar would begin to justify her actions by stating that most of the babies in her care were born out of wedlock from poor mothers who were unable to get abortions as it was illegal around this time. And many women who sought after abortions were young girls and plenty of them did not want to go through with these illegal backdoor abortions as they feared for their health and safety. So, instead, they gave birth to their babies and attempted to find them good homes. Now, lots of these murders were overlooked and were not discovered earlier as most of these mothers either did not care or thought that their child had been safely placed into a safe and loving home. But, luckily, in July of 1920, Dagmar's killing spree would all come to an end. A factory worker named Caroline Agerson birthed a wedlock baby around this time. Caroline is from a strong Christian family and they were ashamed of the baby even to the point they would cancel any type of connection to them. So, with seemingly no other choice, Caroline decides on adoption. She puts up an ad in the newspaper in which it states that she's putting up a three-week-old baby girl who ideally would be put with a nice, loving Christian family. Now Dagmar spots this ad and immediately contacts Caroline. They make arrangements and Caroline ends up heading to Dagmar's house with baby Sarah on the 30th of August 1920. When Caroline arrived, she was terribly upset and had a lot of doubts. However, Dagmar reassured her by describing the process and the idea that Sarah would be placed with the ideal family. Ultimately, Caroline agrees and pays Dagmar 200 krones. Caroline, however, could not get over the emptiness she felt inside, so she returned to Dagmar's house to get Sarah back. Now Dagmar is surprised at Caroline's sudden return and tells her that another family from Copenhagen had already adopted Sarah, but oddly, Dagmar could not remember the address, so she advised Caroline to return later. Now Caroline returned a total of three times, and each time she was told that after Sarah had been adopted, it was out of Dagmar's hands and she could not do anything about it. Caroline, however, would not take no for an answer and found the situation very suspicious. So she goes to the police station and informs them about the situation. The police take Sarah's case seriously and they respond by visiting Dagmar's residence in the Vestero area. They search the house and unfortunately discovered baby clothes and remains which involved bones and a skull found in ashes. Dagmar was arrested and without hesitation confessed to the killings of 16 children. However, only nine bodies were found, so she was only charged with nine counts of murder, even though police were still suspicious and believed that there were more, specifically 25 infants that she murdered, which included her own child. They also made a discovery of 20 photographs of naked kids that she had allegedly killed. And with all this evidence, in 1921, 
Dagmar was found guilty and sentenced to death, which made her the first woman to be sentenced to death ever since 1861. This was later changed to a life sentence as the reigning monarch, Christian X, did not believe in the death penalty for women. Whilst serving her sentence, she died on the 6th of May 1929 at the age of 42 years old. Due to this case, laws in Denmark regarding childcare changed. The laws were changed so that unwanted children now became the responsibility of the government, which meant that young parents no longer had to go through dangerous situations that could possibly result like the one in this case. And as of 1923 in Denmark, they established public houses as foster homes for children born out of wedlock. And that is today's case of Dagmar Overby. Although this case was absolutely terrifying and atrocious, the law that came out of this aids in ensuring that less children of Denmark are put in the hands of monsters. And that is all for today's case. If you guys enjoyed the case, make sure you guys subscribe to join the family. Make sure you comment down below to tell me what you think about the case and to suggest any future cases you want me to cover. Make sure you share this video with your family, your friends, your crime junkie mates. And until next time, stay safe.